Hello. In this video, we're going to look at what we might call special methods. These are methods that it's important that all programmers know about and are comfortable working with. So before we dive into the PowerPoint presentation, we're going to just look at some interesting behaviors. The first one is, as you can see here, I've declared a fraction object and then I've printed it to the screen. And what we've learned so far is that when we print out an object, which is a reference type, it prints out a name that represents the object type and a memory address. And so I run this and it should print that out, but look at that, it prints out one half. So we're going to talk about what we do to, to customize the way that an object is printed to the screen. The second thing we're going to talk about is, in Eclipse, if I type in an object name and put a dot, it gives me a list of all the different methods. Now you haven't looked in my fraction class, um, and if you do the same thing as me, you'll, you'll notice this as well, but you have a whole bunch of methods that haven't been written. So I'm going to tell you that a lot of these methods here, I haven't written. So the question is, where do they come from? And so in this presentation, we're going to start to address that question. And with that in mind, let's dive into our PowerPoint presentation on special methods. And I like to start this by saying everything is an object. So the first thing we're going to talk about is outputting objects. To make outputting objects easier, Java has a built-in method called toString. Um, this method is located in the object class, and it, the header looks like this. And like I said, since outputting objects is so common, Java will automatically access this method if the object is placed in a standard output line. So the question is, well, if Java is automatically accessing it, where is it getting it from? So the toString method is accessed when an object is treated as a string. One particular case is when the object is printed to the screen. So again, a little piece of test code like this. And what does this output to screen? The above code will print out the information about f based on the toString method. There's no toString method defined in the fraction class yet. Therefore, Java looks up the hierarchy to find a possible version to use. The object class, which is the root of Java's hierarchy, contains a toString method. All classes are objects. The toString in the object class returns to the object Sorry, the two string in the object class returns the object type and memory reference as a string. So remember the very first slide here said everything is an object? All classes you define in Java will resolve at some point to the object class. That is the root of the Java hierarchy. So when we run this chunk of code, we print out here the object type and the memory reference. The reason that happens is can be explained with this picture. When we think of a class hierarchy, we think of specific to general, object being the most general type of object. And in this diagram, we need to be able to say a fraction is an object. Only if we can make this a ah, something is in something else does this work. So what happens here is if I try and print out a created fraction, this is what this is what Java does. It starts by looking in the fraction class for a two string method doesn't find one. So what it then does is it moves up to the superclass, which happens to be object. And it happens to have a two-string. And that two-string is a very generic two-string, which prints out the object type and the memory location. And actually, let me restate that. It doesn't print it out. It returns the object type and memory location as a string. So it prints out this. So then the question is, what if I want to change that? So to change that, what I do is I override the toString method. What that means, and you can see that here, is I'm going to write a toString method that has the exact same header in my fraction class. And that's where I'm going to put the specific instructions about how to print a fraction object. So now if we do the exact same line with this kind of setup, note the difference is that toString is now defined in the fraction class. Java will look for toString for instructions on what to print it's there and will execute that method. It will never go up to the object class to find the instructions in this case. It's really important to override the method. You need to have the exact same header as the method definition in the class higher up in the hierarchy. So now it prints out 1 over 2. This is a much more useful kind of output for a fraction object. So the toString method. The toString method is a special method that is automatically invoked when an object is treated as a string. 
The cases we are specifically interested in, or the case we are specifically interested in, is a standard output. The toString method returns a string value. And Java will look up the hierarchy to find a version. If none exists, it will execute the version defined in the object class. This version will return the object type and memory reference as a string. So basically, we're going to start at as in the most specific class as possible, and then it's going to look for a toString. And if it doesn't find it, it's going to work its way up the hierarchy. And eventually, it will find a version in the object class. The second type of special message method we want to talk about is the equals method. So the object class also has an equal method. And the method header is right here. So in the next couple slides, we'll talk about two different approaches to changing the behavior. But before we do that, let's talk about what happens just if we don't define a version in our fraction class. So we're going to talk about this kind of situation. So right now, there's no method called equals defined in the fraction class, but there is one in the object class. So in this version, of the equals method has to apply Sorry, this version of the equals method, that is the version in the object class, has to apply to any object, meaning that if anyone ends up there, they need to be able to compare them in some standard way. And so what it simply does is it compares the memory references. So if I currently try and check if two fractions are equal using that method, we're going to first, the program will look in the fraction class, not find an equals method, and then it's going to move up the hierarchy, look for the equals method. It's there and is going to use it. So let's look at a coded example. So here we have two fraction objects defined and we have a picture here. And then here we have some if statement where right here is where we're using the equals method. So f1 dot equals f2. Remember, there's no defined equal method in the fraction class yet. So if I run this, my question for you is what will this output? And even though the numerator and denominator in both of the fractions are the same, this will output the two fractions are not equal. And that's because the equals method is currently comparing their memory reference. Let's change it up a bit. If I execute the code now, we notice that both the fractions refer to the same object. So if we compare the memory references, the two fractions are equal. Well, the statement isn't completely true since the equals method in the object class compares the memory reference. Um, so the memory references are the same, and they happen to point to the same thing. So this version is a little more accurately worded. So now if, if f1 dot equals f2, we're going to say there is one object, the two references refer to the same object. Else, there are two objects, each object has its own reference. So if we run the code given the current setup, we're going to see that there's one object, the two references refer to the same object. If we change the setup slightly where there's now two distinct objects, there are two objects, each object has its own reference. So really important, the, the default equals method, which is defined in the object class, compares memory references. That's not really great if we want to compare fractions, because probably we want to compare if the numerators and the denominators are the same. So what we're going to do so the first technique to deal with this is we're going to create a different equals method. So notice here, we've put an equals method in the fraction class, but they're not exactly the same. I want to compare a fraction against another fraction. So as opposed to passing an object as a parameter, I'm going to pass a fraction as a parameter. So here's our setup. And again, like I said, both methods are called equals. However, the parameters don't match. They're, they are different versions. This is really important. In the case of the toString method, the method headers were exactly the same, so we were overriding the toString method. We are not overriding the equals method here. We are writing a custom version of the equals method. And the reason why it's useful is because if I actually go and invoke the method, we're going to look in the fraction class first for a version that works, and we're going to find this version. So if a fraction object invokes this method, it will start looking for it at the bottom of the hierarchy. This is what your equals method might look like. And we just look at this point here, we're going to compare the past, the past numerator to the implied numerator and the past denominator to the implied denominator. A couple things we want to make sure we get from this slide. 
It's essential that you must first check the past object is not null. This is critical. Anytime you pass an object into a method, you need to check that it is not equal to null. Otherwise, you will get a null pointer error if it is null. Because what's going to happen is if the object is null, meaning you have a reference but no object there, you're going to try and access a field that doesn't exist and your program is going to crash. To check if two objects are equal, we compare all the fields. Now this is kind of a standard definition, but of course you might decide to, to, to redefine how equal objects are, are evaluated. And a nice little point on technique here. Notice our conditional statements have no braces of them. That's because this if statement contains one other line, which is an if statement, which contains one other line, which is return true. Of course, we like to be efficient in our code. So here's a version that's a little more efficient, a little more condensed. Um, so since this method returns a Boolean, we can just write a Boolean expression in the return line. It's important to note here that we want to make sure we put our other is not equal to null as the first condition. Remember, when we have a string of AND conditions put together, if the first condition fails, it doesn't actually evaluate the rest of them. So by putting other not equal to null at the start, if other is null, it's never going to make it to the other two conditions, the ones that will cause that null pointer exception. So let's talk about a slightly different approach. Let's override the equals method. To override the equals method, we're going to put an equals method, but at the header has to be exactly the same. So we're going to pass it now an object. So the equals method can be overridden. To override the method, the following method header would be added. An eclipse note is that when you override a method, you get a green arrow on the left-hand side to tell you that's what you're doing. So overriding the equals method, um, it actually presents a problem we need to address. We can pass a fraction into an object because a fraction is an object, right? So if I pass a fraction, a fraction object to this method that is looking for an object, that's okay. The object class is the root of Java, therefore everything is an object. What this means is we can pass any object into the overrided, overridden equals method which presents a problem. Here are the hierarchies for three common classes that we might come across. Notice they all resolve to object. So I could, by, by overriding the equals method in the fraction class, I might try and compare a fraction against a J-frame, a fraction against a rectangle, a fraction against a scanner, which presents a new problem we need to deal with. So let's look at a piece of sample code. Here I've defined a fraction object, and here I've defined a rectangle object, a useful built-in class in Java. And now I've invoked the equals method. So I've invoked it with a fraction object, and I have to invoke with a fraction object because it's an, it's an instance method in the fraction class, but I've passed it a rectangle. Now if you write the exact same code as before, you get an error. So the question is, what's the problem now? The problem is this. I'm giving this method a rectangle to look at. A rectangle doesn't have a numerator or a denominator. So Java is essentially saying to you, hey, this isn't necessarily a fraction. I don't know what to do. This might not work. So this is the challenge when we override the equals method is that I can pass other objects to compare against and if I'm looking at the numerator and denominator field they might not be there. To manage this problem we have a couple two new ideas we're going to talk about. Now again these ideas become particularly important when you start looking at hierarchies in more detail but we're just going to kind of touch on them here. So what we need to do first is we need to check to make sure that the object is an instance of a fraction. So there's this built-in command called instance of, and what that does is it takes some sort of reference and it checks what the object type is. So the first thing I do is I say if O is not equal to null and O is an instance of a fraction, meaning, hey, you've passed me this object reference, does it hold a fraction object? I need to know that's true. 
So this will return true if it is a fraction, meaning we're going to come into this condition here. The second thing we have to do is we have to perform this process called downcasting. Now downcasting can sound is a little misleading because when we think of casting, we often think of changing types. And where you might have seen this is where if you have a double and you want to force it to an integer, you cast it to an integer. Downcasting doesn't actually doesn't actually change the object type. All it does is reassures the compiler. So what I've done here is by the time I get to this line here, I've checked O is an instance of a fraction. Awesome. So now I'm going to downcast. So I'm going to say, I know that O is a fraction, so trust me. This is essentially me telling the computer, trust me, O is a fraction, this will work. And I make some new reference, which is a fraction reference type. Once I've done this, I can now check the denominator and the numerator with confidence. So this is a, these are two little techniques that, that, are, that are really useful. So now the question comes, overriding versus writing a custom equals method. This is the question I always get. So is this overridden or is this custom? Well, we can see the method header is exactly the same as that in the object class, so this is an overridden version. This header is, is not exactly the same, so this is a custom version. So which approach do I take? I generally recommend that a custom equals method is written. This is because there's, always, there's already code available to compare a fraction to any other object. That is the code in the object class. So it's still accessible if I, if I pass, if I try and compare a fraction against some other object, it's going to end up there using it. So there's no point in rewriting it. So it's important to note that even if I define, even if I define a custom equals method, this code will execute. But because I'm passing equals an object that isn't a fraction, it's actually going to access the two string version sorry, not the, the object version of the equals method. So if there is a custom method, if there is a custom equals method, this would still work. Java would use the equals that takes an object parameter method located in the object class. The references will not be the same and therefore it will return false. Of course, you could overload the equals object method if you want some special behavior here. So question overriding versus custom. My general rule is I typically use custom unless I can think of a specific reason to override it. So if you have any questions, please post them on my page or send me an email or ask me in class. I want to close with this point. This presentation starts to touch on some class hierarchy ideas. It's really easy to memorize how to write a two-string and how to write an equals method. And that's what a lot of students will do and ultimately that's what I need you to be able to do when, you, when you've worked through this concept. But taking some time to understand the theory is really going to help you when we formally address the idea of, of class hierarchies. Um, and it also will make some other types of programming techniques more accessible at this stage. I hope this video helped. Have a wonderful day.